It's time now to answer some of your business questions. Alfred and Gene are with us once again. But before we get to our viewer questions, I want to ask you guys a question about something that's been in the news a lot this week, which is this whole idea of, as an employer, a small business in our case, asking prospective employees for their Facebook password. I mean, I want your opinion on it. Well, I, if, if you don't mind, I mean, I, so, so I have three kids that are in high school, and they're on Facebook all the time. Right. And, um, and I don't follow what they're doing on Facebook because you follow any high school kids on Facebook, your brain starts to melt. So I don't pay, I, I try not to pay that much attention to it. But I do keep telling them, I say, guys, you know, whatever trash talking is going on on Facebook or whatever, employers are going to see that someday. But College is it okay? Application. Is it okay for you, though? You run a small business. Yeah. Is it okay for you to ask somebody who's applying for a job for their Facebook password? I think not only, uh, it, whether it's okay or not, it's kind of irrelevant. It's negotiable. If, it, if I'm going for a job that pays 20000 a year, maybe I say, heck no. If I'm going for a job that's $20 million a year, I might have to be willing to say. But no, I want to take money. it from not the perspective of the applicant, of, right. of the small business owner. I would like to say. Depending on the position, you feel what's okay? on that, uh, what you're doing on, on Facebook or Twitter could have an appreciable Absolutely impact right. on your company down the road, depending on the position. And not just the company itself, but so, my employees as well. I mean, I got Absolutely. 10 people. I want to know everything I could possibly know about some guy before I bring him into my company, which is going to affect everybody else in there. And if he's up to something and I can find that out on Facebook, I'll give you a great example. I think example. it's great to know. If I own, run a childcare business, um, related business, uh -huh. and I'm hiring someone that's going to be around children, I don't think it's unreasonable for me to be able to have... Now, there should be some protections, but I don't think it's unreasonable for me to know who am I bringing around, who am I promising the parents is around my children on a day-to-day -day basis. And so both of you guys said, this is interesting, I thought at least somebody on this table would say that it, that it is not okay. That, well, I'm not that comfortable it is an invasion with it. of privacy. Now, I'm not comfortable with it, because you know me, I'm, I'm a social media junkie, so right. I, I understand that. But, <laughs> but you think the it's lesson okay. here is that social media is not privacy. Correct. It's not private. No matter what settings you set up, no matter what you do, well, it's not private. Except that it is, right? So, so stuff that is public, of course your prospective employer can see, but stuff behind your password is private. Yeah. And you as an employer are saying, give me access to something that is private. A potential employer, and you can say no. That's exactly right. I mean, I think there should be yes, the option. Yes, you can say no, but saying no is in essence saying don't hire me. Well, that's come not on. necessarily and, and true, but come you, on, you asked come JJ on. as well you how we would feel. decide what is the job that that important to you. Right. You really have to decide that. And as an employer, if somebody refuses to give me your password, then uh, maybe depending on the job, I might say, okay, fair enough, I don't need exactly. it. Exactly. But exactly. if it's somebody at a higher level or somebody that's going to impact not only my company, but again, my people in my I, company, I, I think I have a right to know that. And I, don't, I, I think I, don't I have a right to ask. That. You don't have to answer, but depending on the position, I have a right to ask. Fair enough. I think you guys are could be you are lying through your teeth if somebody says no you're going to say okay no problem it, it depends on the job it depends on the job <laughs> then really why ask does. then why ask for the jobs that you don't care about well we're going to care to some extent but right. you know, and maybe you're right maybe it does have some impact on our decision I but think it, it will yeah. have some impact on your decision there's but, no way to avoid that right but it's part of the give and take of negotiating in the end, we just want to see what you're doing on Facebook JJ <laughs> okay that's what I've been, we're saying this. Anyhow, it's I'm just going to hire a hacker and get it over with that both of you guys think that it is totally fair game to ask all right, okay, now let's move on to questions that do not come from me. I have a medical product that's patented and on the market, but sales are very weak. Doctors and clinicians love it, but they're not interested in pushing products. It appears that we need to target patients directly. How can we reach potential patients without spending a large amount of money on advertising? We already have a website. So how do you get a medical product to the end users, not going through doctors? This is kind of a trick question, and I'll start by saying, Advertising, if there's proven demand for a product, is not an expense. It's an investment. And you have to kind of get past this idea, especially now the way med medical devices and medicine in general is marketed. If you're trying to create demand from the patient mm -hmm. because they're saying they can't get the doctors to push it, I don't see how you get around advertising. So, right. so, so don't get around advertising. I understand trying to be cost effective about it. That said, I would really um, spend a lot of time with other medical device marketers who are marketing products. What are the media companies they're using and the marketing company you, they're using and the marketing techniques to reach their patients mm -hmm. to get them to demand the product? I wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel on my own. I'd really share some intellectual capital with other people in my same position. Yeah, I think I was right. I mean, I don't think you have any choice. I mean, when you're, especially if you're selling to consumers as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's a giant market. And for anybody who's selling to the consumer market, you've got to spend some money to get there. So if you don't have the money to spend, then I think you really, you've you, you got to partner with people that do have the money. Mm -hmm. or, or at the very least, start out on a 
very small scale and trying to build word of mouth. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for all that advice. Very helpful and interesting and surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if any of you have a question for our experts, all you have to do is go to our website. The address is openforum.com slash your business. There, just hit the Ask the Show link to submit a question for our panel. Again, the website is openforum.com slash your business. Or if you'd like, you can email us your questions and your comments. The address is your business at msnbc.com.